Hello, welcome to module 1, session 1. In this first session, we will be discussing about the myths and fact about civil engineering. What is a myth? It is a false story. What is a fact? It is a true story. So by going through this first session, we will be understanding that there are a lot of myths around civil engineering, which we are going to clear it and we will be seeing to the what exactly is the fact. Okay, the first thing, civil engineer build only buildings. So the people around us think that we the civil engineers build only the buildings like residential building, commercial buildings, apartments, but it's not true. We'll see some examples. Yeah, to set up a car manufacturing unit, the first and the foremost person comes over there is a the civil engineer because he has to put up the infrastructure for them. He will be designing a lot of uh, foundations like the foundation may be subjected to vibration or dynamic loading. He will be do the analysis design and he will execute the foundation so that he will give a good product to the mechanical engineers on which they are going to put up the machineries for the manufacturing of the car. And we are involved in building up the power plants depending upon the capacity of the electricity, how much it's required. We are into building of harbor, airport, railway, metro rail, and also we are in space research. So it's the myth that the civil engineers build only the building, but the fact is that we are the build, we are building the society. We are the uh, like we are the foundation for the civilization. Correct? Yeah. We will see the second part. Switching of career from civil engineering is very difficult. That is, after finishing your degree as a civil engineer, the people tell that it is difficult for us to switch from switch from civil engineer to other field of engineering. It's not true. I am having a lot of friends in uh, Infosys who are software engineers who are basically civil engineers. One of my senior, Mr. Parichit, who was topper in VTU, he was the first rank holder in VTU, but he is there in the field of uh, software engineering in Infosys. So it is not difficult for us to learn any language or any software and switch our career from civil engineer to a software engineer or any other kind of engineering. A uh, famous podcaster called Pat Flynn was an architect. Architect, we and the civil engineers go parallel hand in hand because architects do the planning and we will do the execution. So he has switched his career from architecture to uh, uh, podcasting and also digital marketing. So the myth is that we cannot switch career from civil engineering, but the fact is that we can do it. Yeah, we can do it. Poor communication. Most of the people think that Civil engineers uh, don't have proper communication. They 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 lag in their communication. It's not true. Okay, so we are the people who are involved in communicating from with the labor till the ministers or the higher officials. If we are involved in the government projects, correct? So we are the good communicators. We know how to communicate with the labor. We know how to communicate with the client. We know how to communicate with the subordinates. We know how to communicate with our junior engineers and also we know that how to communicate with the government officials to get our licensing done or any other uh, uh, activities related to government uh, issues. Correct? So we are the good communicators in the society wherein we solve a lot of problems Correct? with respect to labor or subordinates or junior engineers what I have mentioned in that uh, screen. We are the good communicators. The myth is that we are the poor communicators. but. The fact is that we are the good communicators. We communicate with any person in the society in their particular language. If you are uh, speaking with the labor, you cannot go and uh, speak with them with a um, hi-fi English or uh, different uh, words which he won't understand it. Correct? So we will be speaking with him with his language so that he will understand what exactly we are telling and get our job done. Correct? So we are the good communicators. Next. We are confined to one job or one location. So most of the people think that after getting your, your degree, you will remain as a site engineer or you will remain, remain as an estimator or you will remain as an AutoCAD drafter. It's not true. We can switch one from other jobs, correct? So we are not confined to one job. We can go to multiple sites. For example, if we are building a residential house today, we can go and build a commercial apartment tomorrow morning. We can go and build a commercial, uh, what do you call, mall tomorrow, correct? So we are not confined to any one job or one location. It's a myth actually. The people think that after obtaining civil engineering degree, the people, the civil engineers will not, cannot go to the other uh, kind of field in 
civil engineering itself correct it's a myth but the fact is that we can switch from one field to other field in civil engineering okay so as i mentioned multiple side multiple careers like estimator drafter designing project manager consultant etc so using the present technology we can serve globally correct in this program in this course you will be learning lot of things okay as a to become a consultant how you can approach different clients sitting at your home itself sitting at your office for example if you are from bangalore you can sit in your office and you can communicate with the people from us or canada or anywhere just using some of the technologies which i'll be teaching you people and staying at your place you can give the service to them okay so it is the myth is that you are not confined to one job and one location the fact is that you can switch it to many different jobs or uh, even you can uh, approach the uh, clients globally by sitting at your office okay this we will cover it at the last because that is a very important point so civil engineer travel constantly so depending upon the nature of the job okay civil engineer the people think that after getting your degree as a civil engineer you have to travel a lot it's not true always okay so as i know only 10 to 15% of the people travel constantly depending upon the nature of the work i'll be giving some of the examples okay a site engineer estimator steel or assist detailer autocad drafter project manager highway engineer and a civil engineering consultant so if you are a site engineer you will be involved in your particular site you will not be traveling a lot correct you will be leaving your house in the morning and you will be reaching at the site and you will get all the jobs done whatever it is has been assigned to you in the particular site and the evening or if it is a shift wise you will finish your shift and you will go back to your house so only the traveling between your house and the site is the traveling time that's it so apart from that you are not going to travel anywhere if you take the estimator steel or rc dealer autocad drafter okay these people are working at the office so due to some situation for example for an estimator if he wants to know something uh, rates or anything he might have to travel to different uh, vendors and he have to get the rates so apart from that he will read the drawings and he will get the estimation done steel detailer or rc dealer autocad drafter what they will do they will take the design inputs from the designer and they will draft it according to whatever the steel requirement or the size of the steel they that has been given by the design engineer so even for them it's not they are not they don't want to travel anywhere but for a steel detailer or rc detailer for checking whatever the details they have given whether the same thing has been uh, properly placed in the site so whether the same dimensions has been given whether the same diameter or has been given they might go to the site occasionally to check it that's it okay project manager the project manager will travel a lot correct but even for him if the project if it is confined to a single project he will go to the project and he will get whatever the details is required and he'll come back so for him also if the project is number of projects like if he is a government engineer for example a assistant engineer or assistant executive engineer so in that situation what happens is he will be having lot of work different projects so he will be traveling from one place to another place constantly or else if it is confined to one job he will go to that particular site he will finish the job and he will come back next highway engineer so even we the manidei business services we are getting involved into highway very shortly okay so what i have understood is that whatever the location they have given to execute the work we will go to that particular location and we will there will execute the work so traveling means what traveling constantly the myth what the people have assumed is that civil engineers travel a lot for example they'll assume that we will be traveling like hundreds of kilometers every day it's not true correct we will go to the site job we will go to the site where the job has been assigned we will clear the job and we'll come back that's it civil engineer consultant a beautiful job as a consultant you can execute n number of jobs sitting at your office correct so we will be we will be learning a lot of things with respect to the, how to become a consultant okay next they must the civil engineer should be a mathematical genius what do you people think all of you are mathematical genius yes true but it's not true that if you are good in maths then only you have to come to civil engineering it's not at all true okay i'll just show you to some of the examples i'll just we will discuss some of the things which are very thing which are very much interesting here you just see here so as when you are doing your degree you would have seen that 
if you are doing if you have done b in civil engineering or btech in civil engineering the mathematics has been restricted to first second third and fourth semester after fourth semester we will not be having any mathematics we will be having the core subjects wherein we will be having the mathematical uh, form formulas or uh, calculations and all but we are not studying the mathematics there so in degree there are some limitations are there so they have restricted the mathematics okay then as a civil engineer we are the problem solvers okay we are the problem solvers we are going to use our common sense most of the times as a civil engineer you have to use your common sense i'll give you a very simple example very simple example concrete takes the compression steel takes the tension correct so if you are getting for example if you are designing a beam if you are getting more tension load what do you have to do you have to provide steel if you are getting more compression you have to increase the area of the concrete so it is very simple correct so if we use the concept and our common sense we will get the design done or we will get the whatever the job has been assigned we can execute it very easily so that is the common sense that we have to use it so we should not be mathematical genius correct if we know the concepts and if we know how to solve the problem and if we put some common sense to it definitely we will achieve the project feasibility so whatever the feasibility of the project what exactly it is looking from us we are going to give that particular output correct next most of the people think that civil engineers are only uh, for male oriented industry it's not at all true so when i was studying in 2004 to 2008 we were like almost 15 students were there Our, among us two of them were uh, girls okay when i finished my b in 2008 then i went to manipal institute of technology to study my mtech in structural engineering and during that course of my structural engineering i used to take class for the btech students as my uh, uh, addition job given in the college uh, okay so for that when i went to the classroom i saw that almost like 60 to 80 people were there in two sections okay 50% of them were ladies the girls that is it's not male oriented industry okay compare yourself in your college uh, where you have studied that is when you are studying you just compare yourself that how many girls are joining to civil engineering correct because there are a lot of opportunities for them in government industry and a lot of office work is there for them like estimators drafters detailers and also they are handling lot of projects i have seen some of my colleagues who are handling lot of government projects and they go to their site every day every day so it's almost 50 50 ratio so there are a lot of career options for female or ladies and in government department they are working as site engineers okay so it's not a male only industry it's a myth okay the fact is that it's almost it has become 50 50 now okay and excuse me and most of people think that civil engineers are boring are you people boring no it's not true correct we are also having hobbies we know how to do the photography we will be taking a lot of photos in our site if we don't know the concept of photography so we can't take the photos at the site correct we will be putting a lot of photos in the instagram whatever the work we are executing on site or what are the drawings we are doing it and we love traveling to visit monumental places that is which are like now developing if you see dubai during 1990s and if you see dubai during 2020s why i am giving example of dubai because there are lot of different kinds of infrastructure is coming up in dubai correct so we people think differently we people doesn't think only in the language like c c plus plus java nothing we are not going to think in that way we are going to think in a different way we are going to show it to the society yes we can do something so we are not boring we are entertaining the people we are entertaining the people the burj khalifa one of the tallest building in the world correct it's been built by the civil engineers so after building the tallest building of the world we are entertaining the people the people will love to go there correct so we are the people who are entertaining the society we are not the boring okay you should not be boring you should enjoy your job okay now the most and the the doubtful thing which is there in lot of civil engineers today is that is it difficult to become a civil engineer consultant yes it is difficult okay it is difficult to become a civil engineer consultant till you don't have that confidence till you don't know the basics of it correct till you don't know the basics of it and till you are not ready or if you are not prepared for it it is definitely difficult to become a consultant okay we'll just discuss some of the points and uh, after finishing this course ruled out okay whatever you are telling that word difficult it's ruled out it's very easy to become a civil engineering consultant okay 
so we will uh, see a lot of uh, some of the questions here already so many consultants are there in the market yes let a lot of consultants are there in the market okay second one which consultation field to select there are a lot of consultation field we are going to discuss each one of them in depth and you can choose which consultancy field you can go also there are multiple fields you can select it okay do you need any experience to be a consultant yes you definitely need experience in the particular job to be a consultant we will discuss that who is actually called as a consultant yeah who is a consultant what do you feel who is a consultant the consultant is a person who gives solution to a problem okay who gives solution to a problem he should be professionally strong in that particular field correct if i am a structural consultant i should be strong in structural field it doesn't mean that i should know everything in structural design okay i may be structurally sound in rcc structure i may not be structurally sound in steel structure it doesn't mean that i should not learn steel structure design and give a consultancy and give service in the steel structure design correct so the consultant is a person who is professionally strong in a particular field who is expertise in a particular field so what you have to do is you should become expert in a particular field one two three fields nothing to worry okay or you can as you can hire people and you be you be a major consultant you can hire people and give job to them and you can give the service to lot of people in the society for example uh if i tell my journey okay i am giving consultancy services from past 10 years after my mtech i started my consultancy field i just entered into consultancy field. i did a job in a consultancy only in bangalore for just 3 to 4 months then i joined a college as an assistant professor i served there as an assistant professor for 3 and a half 4 years but during this course during this job course i was doing lot of consultancy work so i just learn lot of things from my seniors my subordinates my colleagues and all what exactly the consultants will do how they are going to rule the world okay now we you are using the technology which we are going to discuss in this course and we are giving service to lot of people we have already planned we have already in the finalization stage to give service to the people in usa canada and also in some of the companies for australia okay so as a consultant if you are expertise if you know the basics of it you can rule the world if you know the basics that is in civil engineering the basic is the common sense use your common sense what exactly the client is asking what are their pain points if the pain point for example i'll give you a simple example a client comes to you okay you will, you are a consultant for a residential building house okay he'll come to you he is a government school teacher okay what is his expectation a budget eco friendly low cost house correct if he is a government teacher he is expecting the same thing it doesn't mean that he should not go for a big uh, building i'm not telling i'm just giving an example okay it's not whatever i'm telling is an example it's just an example okay so when he comes to you so you should understand that yes this guy requires a house which is economical which is durable and which is eco friendly okay so what you will do you have already analyzed that person you know what is the pain point of him and you are going to give a solution to that problem particular problem so you are expertise in residential building construction you are giving that expertise to a person so you have you have become a very good consultant for him so he will refer you to lot of people so in that way you are going to build your consultancy understood so i have given a very simple example we will see lot of things in the course okay this is just the first session so uh, we will be discussing the different fields of consultancy and different fields of civil engineering in the upcoming session and how the one uh, field is interlinked to other field by taking an example and how a civil engineering has been involved uh, in different fields of other engineering okay how he is helping the other engineering field so lot of things we are going to discuss in the uh, first module okay just keep con confident keep your confidence level high okay if you are having any doubts you are having our facebook group you can ask the doubts there we are here to solve your doubts okay so this completes the first chapter the first session we'll go to the second session thank you